Gracie, and today I'm going to be showing off my collection of hand-sewn 18th century stays. They span from about 1740 until about 1800, so you can see the progression of silhouettes from 1740 to 1800. I'm wearing underneath a petticoat and a, white, and a linen shift and then a cap, just so there's a blank canvas so you can see the progression of silhouettes. So let's get started. In the middle of the 18th century, the stylish silhouette created by the stays was long and narrow, with a high bust and straight front. So these are my stays that are based on the example from 1740 to 1760. As you can see, they have a pretty uh, straight shape. They're not super curvy. One of my friends also made stays like this, and she said they make her feel like a toilet paper roll, which I kind of get that. They're pretty, <laughs> they're pretty cylindrical, but they're also quite comfortable. Um, as you can see, the lacing cord is a little too short, so rather than lacing them all the way in the front, then twisting around, I had to lace them only halfway in the front, and then twist them around and lace blindly, which was pretty difficult. Make sure your lacing cords are long enough. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty happy with these. I like, I like the fit. I wear them sometimes under slightly later garments, like 1770s, just because I think they're really pretty and they're pretty comfortable. And until recently, I didn't have a good pair of 1770s stays. So let's move on to those 1770s stays. Moving into the early 1770s, we see the stylish shape beginning to gain a bit more curve in the waist, but the form is still fairly straight. The bust is still high, but less so than, in, than earlier in the century, and the torso is not nearly so elongated. The next days I'm going to try on are based on the 1776 draft by Diderot. Um, there's a video about making these on my channel, I'll make sure to link that down below and you'll get to see the progression in silhouette from the 17, 1740s to 1760s stays. So let's get trying on. So these are my pink 1770s stays. Um, as you can see, they're a little bit curvier than the green stays. They have a little bit more of a nipped in waist. They would have more of a nipped in waist, but they're not all the way laced at the back. <laughs> I don't like that these, they're, I think they're a little loose at the top and a little tight at the bottom because the, at the top of the lacing laces all the way closed, whereas the bottom doesn't, which is not ideal, but I really like them. I like the shape they give. I like how smooth they are down the front something you see in this period they're like there's a little bit of shape but it's not super like curvy <laughs> um the next days i'll be trying on are these ones these oh, <laughs> these are the scroop augusta stays they're hand sewn with a red wool on the outside and then lined with linen and these are like 1780 through about 1790 and these are really pretty and they're a lot curvier than these so Let's try these on next. In the later 1770s, the trend from earlier in the decade continues, and the bust, though still raised, is lowered slightly, and the length of the torso in stays is similar to its length out of stays. By the 1780s and early 1790s, the stylish figure features a decidedly curved or prow front with the bust thrust forward and the torso gracefully curving inwards at the center front. So these are my 1780s stays, and honestly, these are my favorite stays of all the ones I've made. I think they're just so pretty. I really like the wool binding that I used and the fabric and the silk tape on the seams. And I really like the decorative lacing at the front. Um, it doesn't really serve a purpose. These stays would basically work the same without the decorative lacing, but I think it's super pretty. And I also really like the way the stays look in the back. I like the shape they give. and. I know a lot of people won't believe me when I say this, but these days are actually super comfortable. They're just really supportive, really nice. They also have a nice shape in the front. They're nice and curved, which was the style by the 1780s. It's called the prow front, and it meant that ermine that dresses were a little bit more 
for lack of a better word, voluptuous, but I really like the shape of these stays and they're so comfortable. <laughs> I can't wait to wear these more often and to make more dresses to go over them. With the neoclassical trends of the Directoire and the Regency periods, the waistline raises dramatically to just below the bust, which is thrust forward, low, and full. The last stays that I'm going to try on today are my Regency stays. These are more like 1790s early Regency, but they're kind of indicative of the Regency period because the shape is a lot different. As you can see, they have a lot fewer bones, and they also have bust cups, which is pretty new. These are based on an example in the Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, and the bust cups just give a completely different shape to the torso because in the 1790s, rather than having like a high, um, a high bust, you wanted more of a low, full, round bust. And this is what this is what lends that shape to the torso. And the other great thing about these is they lace in the front, so I don't have to like put them on backwards and lace them up and twist them around. I can just lace them up myself. There is one issue with these stays. I, these are the first completely hand-sewn stays I made and I need to replace the straps. As you can see, the straps are too long and so they're like weirdly stitched and tied here. And I should just cut off the straps and put new straps made of linen tape on. But that's for another day. This is just a try on. So these are the 1790s stays. As you can see, they're much different shape. They're way shorter. The tabs honestly don't serve that much of a purpose because <laughs> they're just there. Like honestly, they don't really need the tabs, but I think it's probably just a leftover from earlier stay making practices. And as you can see, the shape in the front is way different. It's because the shape of the dresses in this period was also much different. The waistline was much higher and there's a lot more gathering and it's just a lot different. I'll make sure to put some images on the screen so you can see the difference. And yeah, these these stays are a little rough. As you can see the back, these are, this looks a little wonky, but I really like them. They're pretty comfortable. They work for 1790s garments and they have a nice shape. So I hope you liked this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more stuff like this in the future. It was pretty fun to film. And yeah, thank you to Ollie for helping film and edit this video. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.